Hey guys, this is Sean and today we're going to talk about self of listening. I have uh, got a lot of requests regarding the uh, listening tips. If you guys type on top of this channel or on YouTube, HZAD education listening tips, there are I think one or two videos regarding that and everything that I have there, that's pretty much what I would repeat. So I didn't feel like I should do that again. Uh, I would appreciate if you guys visit my old video and look at that video regarding the listening tips. Everything is mentioned there, the note-taking strategies and so on. Um, so that should be really beneficial for you guys if you're just looking for tips. This video, however, is going to talk more about some difficult self-tip listening questions that I dealt with while I was doing this exercise. Uh, I did a whole exercise, I made lots of notes, and uh, that's the key, right? That's, that's the key in self-tip listening to take notes. But I felt that this one probably was the hardest exercise that I've done. I also felt that a lot of the answers here were unfair. Um, the way the question was being asked, it didn't make any sense. There, there are times in CELPIP when you have two correct answers and then we always tell students to, to look at every option. You know, Even if you think option A is good, don't avoid looking at the other options. Look at B, C, D, because maybe A and B are both correct and A is more correct than the other. So that's, that's very common in self -tip, in reading as well. So when you are listening and reading, make sure to look at every option. Uh, however, in this part, and I think part five, there was a question where um, there were three answers which were correct. And that's the only one question I got wrong, which annoyed me because they were all so similar. So I thought uh, this would be the perfect topic to talk about on YouTube. Um, and I selected a few questions that I will discuss with you. I wanted to play this video, but because of copyright, I cannot play the audio. I'll just try my best to narrate what, what was being said and the questions uh, along with the options so you guys can understand where I'm coming from. And I hope with this video, you can see the challenges self that puts forward and also how we could deal with them. Okay. So uh, my overall strategy generally is parts one, two, and three, don't take notes focus and listen, because if you take notes, you won't be able to focus. Part uh, four, five, and six, take notes. I know it's opposite to what I said, but here the content is so long, you won't be able to remember everything. So make sure you write things down and refer to your notes when you answer. Other than that, there are, there are inference questions, feeling questions, how did this person feel, what was their reaction, and the answers are like angry, sad, happy, whatever. So make sure you always um, look at or understand, understand the feelings, uh, understand the tone of the people talking so you can, you can, you can interpret their feelings because they will ask you, were they in agreement, were they fighting, etc. Okay. Now, part one, I don't take notes. That's what I said earlier. Part one, two, one, two and three, I don't take notes because I just want to listen and focus and usually that's enough. This part, however, when this started, it is, there's a girl talking to her professor about her courses and the girl starts talking about Latin and they said, okay, Latin, you should do it or not. And then the, the professor next sentence talked about the honors program. The third sentence, the, the girl started talking about French and gave some details about that, how she was doing French in her past years. Immediately, I picked up my pen and started writing things down because I figured out that this is going to be a tough listening. So guys, when you see that they are right away throwing lots of information at your face um, in part one, get your pen ready. We're not supposed to take notes, but we will. Because what happened after that? There was another detail about another subject, literature and Latin, and there was a, a detail about the general versus the honor program. There were so many details, which is so unusual for part one. Uh, but I had to write them down. Okay, so now I wrote them down, it was a little stable, and I answered the first three questions correctly. Now, when I, when I went to uh, part four, sorry, question number four of part one, it was a little weird. Now, the girl has said that just like me, my friend in high school got all A pluses. Okay, now that was what was said, and I'm, I'm giving you this part where the answer is coming from. Now, the question was, what did the girl's friend score in high school? The girl said, just like me, she got A pluses, right? This was a very quick thing that they mentioned and they quickly switched to other topics. But something like this, something like just like me, she got A pluses, a very small sentence, 
you want to write it down if you can or remember it or imagine it you know you and your friends getting a pluses because it's said so fast it looks so insignificant and yet it was helping me to get one of the answers so the options i was given were a plus a a minus nothing was said about a so just a uh, a is eliminated and lower than a minus was not said as well a plus was said a minus is the opposite but A plus was said and that is the answer. Her friend was getting A pluses just like her. It's a quick thing, but it was mentioned, so better to listen to every little thing. Now, this second question was way more hard. Question number five. Um, okay, so here the, uh, the question was, um, what was the girl's main concern? Now, when they were talking, the girl had two main concerns. One was, just like me, my friend was getting A pluses in high school, now she's getting A minuses. Also, she said that by the third year, she wasn't able to form any uh, friendships. The professor responds, he says, well, okay, about the grades, I don't think our professors would mark it, um, in, well, would mark it harshly, I think they're very fair, etc. So you see how quickly the professor ignores the part about the making friends and he's talking about the part of uh, about me about the grading system and you would focus you would think okay grading system is more important let's take more notes on that but the question the next question was about this part what was the girl's main concern the options are not having friends in the general program that's tricky uh number two not becoming an honor student until third year that, that was never said, ignore that. Number three, not getting grades as high as her friend. Tricky, very tricky. But she said that I, just like me, my friend was getting A pluses in high school, now she's getting A minuses. So she is not concerned about her grade right now. She's just talking about her friend. So this option, not getting grades as high as her friend, eliminate that. Now, the last option is not being part of any social group. I've done this exercise with three people. None of them have answered this correctly. I answered that one, and that is correct. Not being part of any social group. The reason it's correct is because her friend in the third year wasn't able to find any friends. So she fears that she will have the same fate. But it doesn't say the word friend. It says not being part of a social group, which is a different paraphrasing so yes, they can paraphrase the, the situation. And it was something that was really ignored very quickly when they were speaking. But those things also are as valuable as the things that are not ignored, okay? Uh, the, the other option that I was competing with was the first one, not having friends in the general program. Well, that one is true, very true. But when they were talking about it, they said that they were talking about the honors program. So again, Selpip is trying to trick you. And if you listen to the professor, the professor is talking about this honors program where she's not making friends, her friend. And uh, this answer is about the general program. It's a trick eliminated. But it shows you how much detail you have to listen to. You have to listen to the word honors program. You have to listen to the word that she didn't make enough friends and then paraphrase it in your brain that that could mean social gathering because that's how the answer was phrased, not being part of any social group. Okay, so really annoying. Um, parts two, three, four, not, well, they were hard. They were extremely hard, but not significant enough for me to, uh, to discuss it. Part five, though, let me discuss part five with you. So this was a video. Now, this was a video about three people, two women and one, uh, one guy. The guy was very grumpy. He was saying, why are we doing this meeting? It's about workplace. Let's ignore it. Uh, let's focus on other things. The women were talking about no. Let's you know focus on this meeting. It's we we need to think about the format of the of the meeting and how we can help our uh, coworkers, etc. That's the whole gist of it. Okay, so I marked here my first question that I struggled with. This was so annoying. Okay, so let me tell you again about the guy. The guy is saying, "Why are we doing this meeting? It's so annoying. We can do other stuff and." Uh, we're too busy to do it, and, and uh, maybe we should, we should you know, focus on other things. Now, the girls started talking. They started convincing him. And at the end, the guy says, well, yeah, you know, we shouldn't act this way. If we're acting this way, it's too selfish, and maybe we should think of other people and uh, help others out. Uh, we shouldn't all be too busy. Okay? 
This is pretty much exactly how he said it. Now, the question said, the very first question said, which word best describes the man's last sentence? Option one, busy. Option two, pessimistic. Option three, self-centered, which means selfish. Option four, unfriendly. It's not unfriendly. He didn't say anything rude to anybody or didn't say, I don't want to make friends. It's not about being friends with someone. Again, what he's saying is, why? Uh, well, well, at the end, he was saying that, yeah, you know, maybe if all of us work together and we're not too busy, we will be able to help others and we wouldn't be, uh, we wouldn't be all, all this negative and we should think about others and not have all these uh, uh, other priorities. There's so many things he said at the end. And if I pick option A, busy, it makes sense because he said we're also busy. We should focus on other things. Uh, if I pick pessimistic, he is negative. He's being negative. He's, th he's criticizing other people. And if I pick self-centered, that is also correct because he's saying we shouldn't be selfish. We should, we should look at other things. So it's a very confusing sentence, first of all, to tell what he intends to say, and the options are so close to each other. I picked busy here. This was the only question I got wrong, and the correct answer is self-centered, which is selfish, because he was saying the very first phrase was, we shouldn't be so selfish, oh, well, we shouldn't just think about ourselves, we should focus on other departments, and so on. So he is self-centered, but again, in self bib when you get these kinds of questions, all you can do is use your best judgment. If you're looking for a strategy for something like this, you will not find it. Some questions like this are meant, meant to be there to get a, a mistake. You will have two, three very correct answers, and it's so subjective. Like, I can have a lawsuit and tell the examiner that, no, that is pessimistic. He's obviously being negative. Uh, he's criticizing other people. And for them, it's, it's their subjective opinion. It's how they thought of it when they made this uh, lesson or test. So some things you cannot debate. Some things you just have to judge. There's no strategy. You just have to see the feeling behind it and answer. And those things you, you might get right, might get wrong. It's a 50-50. So don't try to get everything right. It's really difficult. That's a very lame thing to say as a teacher. But trust me, in IELTS, we have that. In CELPA, we have that. There are always one or two questions in one of these modules which is bound to be wrong because you think differently and the examiner might think differently. It's also different cultures. My culture might tell me something to think in a certain way and the examiner might think in a different way. So use your judgment, but you can't win all your battles. Question number two was, why did the women remain silent at the end? So what happened was this guy started off by saying, that I'm just forwarding this video here. Uh, this guy started by saying that he uh, didn't want this meeting, and at the end he was saying that okay, this meeting is a good idea. Maybe uh, we shouldn't be so selfish. We shouldn't think about our departments. We should think about others. So the women at the end were just looking at him in surprise because he was saying exact the exact opposite of how he started. Okay, the options were they're amused that the man is describing himself which is correct because they were laughing at him because he is now different. He is now talking about himself in a way that he criticized before. Option two, the man has given them headaches. No, didn't happen. They still disagree with, the, what, the, with what the man said. No, didn't disagree. And they don't understand what the man said. Again, uh, this is not mentioned. So the correct answer was they are amused that the man is describing himself. This was easy for me. Okay, but I'm telling you this because I was looking at them. Part five of the video, you got to look at their faces too. They were giggling, they were smiling, and that's why I you know they were amused at the men. So again, this is a strategy. Make sure to look at their faces and, and how they're feeling. In fact, if you haven't seen my other video on my tips, I have mentioned look at their appearance, look at, look at how they're dressed, and, and they're, uh, if they're wearing glasses or not, if they're old or not. Because there are questions like here, there's a question, what room does the woman in the t-shirt want to reserve? So you got to remember who is wearing the t-shirt and the glasses and so on. Okay, then we had question number five, which was difficult as well. Uh, question five was, what was the man's attitude towards the event? And um, let's see. Let me see my transcript here. Okay, okay. 
So what was the man's attitude towards the event? Uh, he now he was very negative, and he was saying that he uh, he was saying that we shouldn't have these meetings uh, every time. We should have it once a week, and uh, we shouldn't have a big group. And maybe it's going to be good for the workplace morale. Okay, let's look at the options. Uh, option one, he would rather not make a presentation. Option two, he wishes the women aren't involved. Option three, he would rather resolve staff grievances, which means complaints. Option four, he wants to invest time in other priorities. He did say something about this program, and he said that this program will reduce staff grievances. Okay, so a lot of people pick that option. But look at the question. The question says, what is the man's attitude towards this event? The option says he would rather resolve staff grievances, which means he's not supporting this event. Instead of that, he would rather resolve staff grievances, which means he doesn't support this, he would do something else. But he was resolving staff grievances as part of this event. He liked this event because it would reduce staff grievances. So it has the word staff grievances. That doesn't mean that's the correct answer. In fact, when you see the same word many times, be careful, it could be a trick. So a word like rather is affecting your answer. That's not correct. Okay, the answer was he wanted to invest time in other priorities. So that's why he was saying, let's do it once a week. Again, he didn't say at this part that I wanna invest time in other things. He said, let's not do too much time here. Let's just give it once a week. That means automatically, he wants to invest time in other things. Okay, so again, interpretation. If he doesn't want to spend time here, it means he wants to spend time in other places. Okay, so again, we're just thinking, we're interpreting. Uh, then we have question number six here. Let me go down there. Oh yeah, question six was tough. So question six says, what do the women think about the lecture format? So let me tell you what the, the women said. The women said it's uh, it, it shouldn't be on the stage. Um, when we're on the stage, one person is talking, nobody else participates, so let everybody talk, engage them, have role plays, and make them talk. Now the options are, um, it's too confusing, it's too lengthy, it's too passive, it's too technical. Technical means like it's very detailed, right? You're getting into, like if I fix my car and I talk to you about the, the, the wirings and all the logics, it's technical. That's not mentioned. It's too confusing, that's not mentioned. You have two really good options. It's too lengthy and it's too passive. Now, if you don't know what passive means, but if you think that it's too lengthy it, uh, is not the right fit, you, you're eliminating the three. You don't know what the fourth one means, passive, but you eliminated the three. So most likely the fourth one that you didn't know is the correct answer. You just don't know the vocab, but I would rely on that. That works many times. If three are eliminated, fourth unsure, fourth one is the correct one, okay? Now, passive in this case means uh, it's not engaging people. It's too, you know, individualistic. It doesn't involve other people. So that is the correct answer. Uh, and it was not lengthy because they didn't say it's lengthy. They just said involve more people. Okay. So vocab is important. I upload vocab lessons here every week. So please subscribe. That will improve you guys and that will help in these tough questions. But again, the strategy here. If three things are eliminated, the fourth is the correct answer, even if you are unsure. Okay. Number seven was what room does the woman in the t-shirt want to reserve? I'll just give you a simple um, answer for this. There were many options here. Uh, the woman said, I don't want to do this in the cafeteria. I would rather, uh, well, I don't want to do it in the cafeteria and definitely not the small room we're talking in right now. I would rather do it in the conference room. The options were many, and there was no option about the conference room. The conference room is the correct answer. That's where the women wanted it. But the answer was the big room. Okay, so the big room is the conference room. Well, you can eliminate some options. There was a um, staff cafeteria, didn't mention it. Room with the stage, didn't mention it. The one they're in now, she said, I would not want this room, so eliminated. And the big meeting room is correct because a conference room is probably big, not always. But again, it's being paraphrased. So it doesn't have to be, don't look for the same word, don't look for the conference room, but something similar. Okay, the last question here, number eight, what does the, does the woman in the t-shirt mention about the winter party? Now she was talking, she was saying about the winter party, she was saying that, you know, just like you see in the winter party, we have all department heads talk to 
themselves. They don't talk to other people. And uh, maybe if we start involving people, they'll start chatting more with each other. Um, and now the options are, again, the question is, what does the woman in the t-shirt mention about the winter party? Option one, to warn the risks of tribal thinking. Didn't, isn't the answer, didn't mention that. Uh, suggest it could be in the summer, they didn't mention it too. So two legitimate options left. To illustrate a need for improvement. And the next one, to give an example of inclusiveness. So think about it for a second, which one would be correct? She did say we should include more people in the winter party. They're not talking, but if we do changes, they can talk. So the answer for most people is to give an example of inclusiveness, which is wrong. The correct answer is to illustrate a need for improvement. Okay, so when when she was mentioning this party, she was giving the example of how people are not talking. And that's an example of how we should improve in that area. And not about inclusiveness, but the, this is an example of improvement. There is no strategy here. There's nothing that can prepare you for this. The only thing you can think about is comparing the words. Now, if I look at option number three, which says to illustrate a need for improvement, I'm thinking, okay, it means that we, this was an example of how to improve things. Okay, option four, uh, give an example of inclusiveness. Well, it was not an example of inclusiveness because it was an example of uh, uh, how people are divided, not included. So I'm changing the words from the multiple choice into my own words and thinking in my brain according to my language what makes sense. And then I can analyze the options better. So the strategy here is to analyze options better by repeating them in your mind in different words. That helps a lot. Okay, we went to part five. Part five was about, um, oh yeah, part five was, um, was easy actually. There were two questions that were tough. Four, sorry, three questions. Parts, uh, questions one, four, and five. There, this was about uh, a guy, Roger, who traveled from Surrey to Vancouver and it took him 40 minutes, then he died. His son now was traveling and it took him one hour. Uh, so they were saying the transport system hasn't improved even though we're building roads. Uh, the solution is to cut off the transport, to, to tell people to go in buses more. That was the whole idea. Now they mentioned this uh, in this way. They said, Roger traveled every day from Surrey to Vancouver. It took him 40 minutes in the past. His son traveled uh, to Vancouver as well, and it took him one hour in the current times. The question was Roger's son, and the options are, just a second, gonna rewind it, okay. Roger's son works in the same city as Roger did, takes the same bus as Roger did, lives in a more distant suburb than Roger did, has a more comfortable commute than Roger did. There's nothing, none of this mentioned. The correct answer though is the first one. Works in the same city as Roger did. Because we don't know this, but the thing is, they said Roger went and went to Vancouver, commun uh, commuted there for 40 minutes and his son commuted there for one hour. So it looks like they have the same starting destination, which means they're probably living in the same city. The strategy here is interpretation. You're getting an idea based on what's said, you are now inferring. This is an in, this is um, an information that you have to make a judgment on that, well, they're both commuting to Vancouver, so probably the starting point is the same and it must be the first option that they they both live in the same city. So that is, that's the correct answer. Not very clear. Question number four was in Vancouver, many people are opposed to. This one uh, wasn't tricky, it wasn't paraphrased. They said that we removed a biking lane from a bridge and people didn't like it. And that's what was mentioned. The correct answer was um, a bicycle lane on a bridge. So this was not that hard. The thing was, if you have done this listing, it was mentioned so fast, they were mostly talking about how motorists are negative and they don't like changes. And we, we removed one bicycle lane from a bridge and they didn't like it. They mostly have negative attitudes. And it was pretty much said the same way. It was said so quick, all in between the negativity of motorists, that you would focus on the negativity of motorists and not on this bicycle lane. So it's very easy for, for them to put a question in there, but don't ignore the small phrases. Everything is important and it came out to be an answer. Okay, 
The last question is question number five here. One problem with the public transit is that. So there were lots of problems that were mentioned. Um, okay, so this is interesting. Shopping, accessible. Yeah, okay. So they were saying that we cannot have public transport because there, there are so many issues. Yeah, I wrote it down here. They said that uh, cars are better than buses. They're more comfortable and people are not fatigued when they're in cars um, and their offices are not so far from their car parking. They're far from the train station. Uh, also, when you have to do grocery and other errands, that's what they said. I wrote it down. When they have grocery and other errands, it's easy to use a car. Now, here's the correct answer. Shopping centers are more easily accept accessible by car. There's nothing mentioned about the shopping centers, but that's the correct answer. Why? Because they said that groceries and errands are easy to do with cars. So errands meaning like all the stuff you need to do, you know, chores. Um, and shopping centers could be a part of your errands that you're running. And because shopping centers are more accessible by cars, that's why people don't support public transit. They're playing with the words. So when you're in the exam, you just have to look at your notes. And first of all, eliminate the wrong ones. That's the easiest thing to do. And then you paraphrase it yourself. If you see that you have written grocery and errands, think about, okay, I have done, uh, well, okay, uh, grocery, errands. So I mean, anywhere I have to go, I have to go to a 7-Eleven. I have to fill up my gas or I have to buy some uh, chocolate milk or anything. You can think about cars. And then the shopping mall will come in your mind. And if they have said shopping mall, you will click and you'll get the right answer. So the examiners will try to paraphrase. They'll try to manipulate the answer. But if you can paraphrase your notes in your mind, you can match it with whatever it's being said. If you can use the right judgment, you can use good analysis, you can take a lot of notes, focus on every little thing that's being said. Don't just focus on the big picture. Focus on every little thing and always have the pen ready just in case they start talking too much, you start writing the notes. If you do all those things, as I mentioned in this test, you will get a lot of it right. I still got one wrong, but that was just one question in this whole test, which was really complex, just with the help of practice and good strategies. So I hope this video helps out. It's 27 minutes long, but I really hope you guys are able to uh, look at this and understand and improve your listening. Thank you so much, guys. Please subscribe to my channel and uh, turn on your notifications. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. Talk to you soon. Take care.